Okay. So uh, we have, let's say we're in D major, okay? I'm sort of recreating what's on um, the 151 here, okay? Um, you have a cadential 6-4 uh, in D major, and the notes are this, okay? And it's labeled cat 6-4, okay? And here it says the sixth above the bass moves to the fifth above the bass. So this is what this chord sounds like. Or rather, right? One notice the sixth above the bass on this. I'm going to turn on the TV too. Mm -hmm. S? What note, what note letter, not F. Well, first of all, it's, um, we're in this is F sharp, I think. Okay. Um, I'm going to write this down here. Okay. Okay, it's sharp. What note is in the bass? A. 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 So what note is a sixth above the bass? F sharp. F sharp. F sharp. Okay. Okay. So that's the F sharp. That's the sixth. Good. So yeah, the F sharp. Okay. Uh, and then that moves to which note? Fifth above the bass, which would be what? B. E. So you have, right? in this configuration, a cadential 6-4, this is what always happens, okay? So the 6th above the bass moves to the 5th above the bass, okay? Next, it says the 4th above the bass moves to a, the 3rd above the bass, okay? So the 4th above the bass is which note? D, okay? It's the 4th. And then that moves to the 3rd above the bass, right? So then you have this. Okay? okay. And you end with a five in root position. Yes, there you go. So then, does that mean that cadence is more than one chord? Is that cadence is more than one chord, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and we talk, uh, the cadence is, is a pattern that happens um, at the end of a phrase, usually, uh, that it's, it's a pattern of chords that's at least two chords long. Okay. So what, with just one chord, um, it's often difficult to, to say which, which kind of cadence it is. And we'll talk about cadences later, okay? But for, for right now, know that the cadential 6-4 um, is a certain type of 6-4 chord that resolves to dominant. So it's okay. always going to resolve to a dominant if it's a cadential 6-4? Yes. Or rather, if it resolves to a dominant, then we can categorize it as a cadential 6 4. Right? And cadential 6 4 is always going to be a 1 6 4. Right? Yes. Yeah. Now, so the writing CAD is just another form of shorthand instead of writing the 1. It's, that's a good question. Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, because I'm going to move forward here and it says, okay, uh, right after the sentence, the fourth above the base moves to a third above the base, it said, the author says, it is dominant in function. So even though it's built on a tonic, Many theorists opt to label it with a five instead of one. Okay. Now we can certainly label this chord. Um, so these two things, hopefully, this the connection is becoming a little bit more clear. Uh, these two things means the same thing. Okay. When you see a cadential six four or a cat six four, uh, that means the same thing as a one six four, except that in the instance of a cat six four or a cadential six four, it always implies that this chord is moving to five. Okay. So. When you see this as a, a labeled or uh, analyzed as a cadential 6-4, it's a 1-6-4 chord that always moves to 5. Right. Okay. Because it doesn't sound like a 1. Right. We're in D major. Uh, right. That sounds final. Okay. And then you have this. Um, in function, it really sounds more like a five. Right? Uh, it sounds closer to this, okay? because it has such a draw that it wants to resolve to the dominant. Okay? So theorists, um, and look, music theory is about identifying these patterns and, and categorizing them in a useful way, okay? uh, so that we can know what, we can sort of put different things together and say, why this is similar to this, uh, et cetera. 
uh, because of this, uh, music theorists said, you know, uh, has made the case that, you know, this, when you see 164 like this, uh, it's confusing because it doesn't really imply a 1, right? It really sounds like a 5, right? So instead of saying 164, in this instance where there's a 164 going to 5, we just sort of opt to call it something else entirely, okay? So that you we're really clear that the function of this is not tonic, right? The function of this chord is dominant. Okay. That is to say, again, if you, if you, you know, have a rousing concert, okay, when you end like that, it, it, it's like, uh, okay, what happens? Right. It needs to resolve, okay? So it cannot be tonic in nature. It's actually dominant because it's so unstable. Okay. But it is, it is basically a, a, a tonic moving position. Um, second inversion. Second inversion. Right. You can see that the notes are all the tonic notes. A, D, F sharp. They're all there. Right. It's just because it's a second inversion, right? And there are more reasons behind this. Um, one is that the yes, Mark. What was that? It's also an eleven chord, right? What's that? Because if you were to play an A in the bass, you'd be like an eleven chord, I believe. Eleven thirteen. Eleven chord. So that would be uh, so, so, so eleven minus seven is five. Okay. So then you have with the eleven from the bottom. I was I was looking at like like on the notes of the scale, I guess it would be an eleven thirteen. That four and six would be like eleven thirteen. And I see. Right, right, right. I, I was looking at it different. I guess. Yeah, you can think about it as, as inversion. I mean extensions. Uh, but what is important here is um, part of the reason why it sounds unstable. Okay, and this is um, this has to do with dissonance, and we haven't talked a lot about dissonance. And you know what a, what what the basic dissonances are? What what intervals are dissonant? Minor second. Minor, minor second. Seven. Right, minor seven. So sort of right. Or maybe a tritone. Right? Diminished chords? Just intervals. Okay. Right. So so we're talking about intervals that, that are dissonant, not because they like sound icky or something. Okay. And mostly it's it's a it's a say, it's sort of say, stating whether it's static, whether it's is something that is uh, stable, or rather something that wants to resolve to something else. We're talking about expectation, right? Okay. So, so these are the things, dissonances create expectation for resol resolution. Uh, what's unstable here, um, and we don't naturally hear it as such, is really this perfect fourth between A and D, right? right. Which by itself, it doesn't sound very dissonant, right? If you hear it, it's pleasant. Uh, but what we mean by dissonance, again, is not just whether it sounds, you know, crunchy or bad or whatever. Uh, is that, is it, is it stable? And in the, in what has developed in Western music, um, this interval itself is un unstable because it needs to resolve to a major third. Right. Now, you might not hear that, and that's partly because the music that we've been hearing, you know, has a lot of fourths and, and stuff. And also, it's in the context of a, of a major chord, right? So you, when you hear, right, everything sounds pretty pleasant and sort of sort of stable, okay? Uh, but just know that, conceptually, uh, there is this fourth that's between A and D that's leading to this, okay? Another example here on the, on the bottom, um, we're in, I guess, in um, B minor. So you have a four chord, condensial six four, five, one. Okay, again. Okay. Um, what's different here? Well, we're raising the leading tone, okay, of course. But the same concept uh, pretty much applies, okay. And um, if you go down the page here on page 151, okay, on the bottom, um, look at the rule number three. It says four-part writing, SATB, um, you're doubling all of that, okay? Um, for chords found in second, uh, in first inversion, um, any pitch can be doubled that creates smooth voice leading. Um, oh, I thought I was going to say something else. Uh, no, oh, so that's right, the first sentence. Double the root in root position chords and the bass in the second inversion chords. 
okay? Uh, so if we're, if we're expanding this into four parts, okay, uh, which note would you double in this, in this instance? What's on the board? Uh, it's not just a sixth chord. Sixth chord is a seventh chord. So right. You would double the bass note, which would be A. Right. Right. So maybe I'll add an A there. Okay. Which further the, the 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 bass note here is an A, which is which um, which scale degree of the scale of, of D major? For D major, A. Okay. What number is A? Uh, five. It's the dominant. You're doubling the dominant. Okay. So it really further um, it further <coughs> accentuates the fact this is a dominant in function. So that's what the cat 6 4 is. Um, again, there's the same technical thing as 1 6 4. Uh, we're opting to call it cat 6 4 because it r reminds us that this is not a tonic chord. Okay. Um, okay, let's take a look at how we would do the voice leading for from your homework here. Um, Do it a few chords at a time, or I'll try to fit all of them in. Okay, first of all, what key are we in? B flat. B flat. Okay. Now, in general, um, when you're when you're doing a four uh, four part texture in this context, uh, please only put the soprano and alto voice on the top step, and then only the um, tenor and bass on the bottom step. Okay. If you're gonna use uh, half notes or any note with a stem. Uh, for all the soprano lines, uh, the stem should go up, so sort of like this, regardless of what they, where they are. Uh, the alto notes will go down, and tenor go up, bass go down. This is just, uh, it looks like a hymnal. I don't know if you've, you've seen hymnals that look like this. This violates the rules that we have learned before. Okay. Yes, this violates the rules we've learned before. Okay. So, soprano goes that way. Okay, but this is specific to this practice, okay? So, soprano goes up. Alto goes down, tenor goes up, bass goes down. Now, if you use a, a whole note, it doesn't matter, but we'll, we'll be consistent here since there's a time signature, so we'll use half notes, okay? Okay, the first chords are, so you have one, and then what's the next chord? Five, six, five. Okay, next you have six, four, oops. six, four, a cadential 6-4, 5-7, and 1. All right, hopefully I'll have enough room here. OK, um, what are the notes of the B flat major play? B flat D and A. Thank you. And I would most likely, again, put it up here, just to remind myself. Uh, and let's do all the notes. So you have five, six, five. So what are the notes of the five, six, five in B flat? F, A, C, E flat. Excellent. Okay. Six chord in B flat. G, B flat, D. Uh, the four chord in B flat. E flat. G, B flat. The cadential 6 4 in B flat. <laughs> Same as 1. Okay, and what note are we going to double in the cadential 6 4? B flat. Why? The base. The base. But isn't it F? Because it's 6 4. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh yes, I did it right. Okay, this is times two. Okay, five seven in B flat. F A C and then B flat and then one is B flat D F. 
Right. Did you guys write out the notes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Next, um, we will start with, um, and in general, it's a good idea to uh, put this in a way that you can play. Okay? I've seen some of you uh, putting sort of really, uh, the tenor and the bass really low together, um, uh, like sort of space really, really apart. Uh, it's generally in this style to try to keep everything close together. Okay? Uh, as, as best as you can in the middle somewhere. Um, that is to say, imagine, imagine you're writing something for people to sing. Right? If you have uh, bass parts that are sort of one ledger line below the staff, and then with, with Gs and Fs and E flats, that's harder to sing. <laughs> I, I only have a range down to an F. And, okay? and even a true bass really goes down to about a C. Okay? Uh, think about just using the staff itself as the, as the guide for the range. And this is useful for when you work with vocalists as well. Okay. Um, so for this first chord, um, I know those are the notes. Okay. So next, I need to sort of plop them down. Um, so let's start with with what we what we're gonna start with. Um, for, first of all, what note are we gonna double here for the first first chord? B flat. Excellent. All right. So I will know that. So this is. I'll circle the note. I'm gonna double. Okay. And. Where should we, Joe? How did you start with this? I had the uh, well B flat on the second line of on the bass. Okay. Uh, the fourth line. Uh, right. It's kind of from the bottom. I do the same. Right. Thing. Or the second line. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's what I do. Good. Uh, what about the uh, what about the rest of them? What's the tenor have? Uh, the tenor is yep. the the B on the top. Okay. Above the line. Uh, above the line. Uh, B flat again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then what about the alto and the soprano? I had D and okay. F. D and F. Okay. That works? Yeah, I mean, it's in closed position. Okay. okay. Uh, that is to say, the top three voices, really, you can't fit anything else in there. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. No, yeah. Now, uh, we're using our right and our left to play it, right? Sure, yeah. So I use the D all the way up on the F. It didn't sound bad, so I don't know if that would work. That's fine, too. It's just a more open position. Okay. It's a more open position. Yeah, okay, that's, that's fine. Acceptable. Yeah. Uh, okay, next, we're moving to 565, five, okay? So, uh, Kemba, what do you think? What should we do with the soprano voice? Well, first of all, um, going along the checklist here, uh, what, and by the way, there are different answers, right? So this is just one version of what we're doing. Um, first, we're moving each voice to the closest possible pitch uh, to create uh, smooth voice leading uh, and keeping a common tone. So Kimba, are there any common tones between the one and the five, six, five? Okay, the F, okay. So I would suggest that we keep the F. Okay. Is that it? Okay, uh, so the next question, Kemba, is then um, what do we do with the other voices? Okay, what's going to be in the bass? Let's start with that, because that uh, is sort of settled. What does 565 tell you? 56, the 5 part tells you it's F, A, C, E flat. And 65 tells you what? The second, the second inversion. Second inversion, which means C is in the bass. Yeah. Oh. Second inversion. First inversion. Sorry. Oh, 65 is the first inversion. First inversion. Oh, oh, that's what I just wrote. So, Kappa, first inversion, what, what note would be in the bass? A. A. Excellent. Aww. Oh, don't despair yourself. Okay, here, here is so far. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, Daniel, what do you think? Uh, what should the alto do? What are the two options for the alto? Uh, I'm going to also check off these things as we do it. So I did this, this, this. I did the A and the F. Okay. 
E flat and C, sure, okay? So you can sort of see um, the alto has two options, either the E flat or the C, okay? What about, Daniel, what about the tenor? Also E flat and C, okay? So if you map this out, E flat, uh, C and E flat maybe, okay? Right. Uh, so which, which uh, configuration gives you the smoothest voice leading? Because you have, to, you have to split between um, either having the alto go to E flat and the tenor going to a C, or you have the alto going to a C and the tenor going to an E flat. Okay. Which one do you think provides the smoothest voice leading? Alto, yeah. Okay. I'm going to break this down one more step. Okay. From D to E flat is how many steps? Okay, one one step, let's say. From D to C, one step. From B flat to E flat is four steps. And then B, B flat to C is one step, okay? So I would, I would go with the tenor first, okay? And move the tenor to a C which leaves the only option is the alto and the E-flat, okay? So, so far we have this. Kevin likes that. All right. Okay, uh, next, so I'm gonna check that off. C and E-flat, done, okay. Uh, next I have a six chord, right? There's a bar line here, I think. Uh, the sixth chord has G, B flat, and D. Okay. Let's start with the bass again. Um, so we're sixth chord in root position. So Nicholas, what's going to be in the bass? What note is leading in the bass? Um, G. G. Excellent. Okay. So you have something like. Uh, okay. And then, um, are there any common tones, Nicholas, between the five, six, five, and six? Uh, there's no G in the five, six, five. Oh. Yeah, no common tones. Okay. So we're moving uh, from one chord to the next. Then uh, with the with the, um, the, 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 the uh, with the closest distance possible. Okay. Uh, take a look at rule number two here. It says if no common tone is present, move the upper voices in motion contrary to the bass voice. Okay. Uh, when possible. Uh, okay, so if that's true, okay, so let's let's try that out. Um, going from the soprano voice, what's the next note? Uh, well, first of all, what direction is the bass going? Down. Down. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, the soprano voice would would do what? Go up, Go up to which note? Uh, what note are we doubling here for this chord? G, right? Because we're doubling the root in root position. Okay. So here's a G. Okay. Next, you have um, an E flat. Okay. Uh, what note could it go to? The closest note. D. It is not in contrary motion to to the bass. Okay. But if I made if I went this higher to the B flat, uh, that would confuse things. It wouldn't change chords, it would just have the alto now singing higher than the soprano. Right. Uh, and it make sense. Uh, egos aside, uh, it, it, it confuses uh, the ear as to distinct lines. What we're trying to do here is create four distinct lines. Okay? It's almost, it's a hymn. Okay? Hymns, when you, when you sing each line, okay, it has a distinct uh, melody, and they work together. Right. So, in that way, I would prioritize having having um, a beef, uh, D over here. Okay. So, so I, what about the rule uh, that we can go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's in general um, should be followed. But in here, uh, the closest note, okay, is 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 not contrary. 
And there's one one slight variant on this rule is that uh, it, the rule works works more um, works better when both chords are in root position. And since this chord five six five is in first inversion, mm -hmm. uh, it helps already to 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 uh, make it a little smoother. Uh, but in general, uh, the the closest uh, the closest no chord tone would be would be the best. Um, have you guys ever heard of things like parallel fifths? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what we're trying to also avoid by going in contrary motion right, is to not have uh, parallel fits, but that is to say two notes moving in the same direction that are a fifth apart. Right? Things like flooding back, these things. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, so, so Gabe, to answer your question, um, I mean, the, the reason why... Um, we're doing that is to avoid parallel fits. Uh, in this way, since the since this is a root pro, uh, root position progression, uh, and the first one is in sorry, the first one is in first inversion, the second one is root position. It helps. Um, it already helps a little bit to not have that that be a problem. Um, I know that might sound just I don't know bonkers at the moment, but I it will clear up. Okay, so so far it sounds like this. Um, good. Next, we have we have a four chord, okay, and um, well, the notes of the four chord uh, is E flat, G, and B flat. Mm -hmm. Since this is a root position chord, uh, what notes should we double mark? Yep. Which is which note? The e flat. E flat. All right. So we'll have two of these. Okay. Are there any common tones between um, yes. the six and the four? Yeah, which ones? B flat. B flat. B flat. So keep the B flat. Right. Uh, also, what's going to be in the bass? The bass will be E flat. So I'm going to have this jump up. Okay. Uh, and uh, what else? There's another common tone. G. 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 Okay. So I did the G, I did the E flat, I did the B flat. So I need one more E flat. And so the logical thing to do would be to move the alto up to the E flat. So you have this now. Oh, oops, that's much funkier. But you play the E flat. You play the E flat low or higher? Higher. I went up a sixth. Okay. On the keyboard, you play the low. Let me see. Hold on. Yes, Jay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. If I would like, I would put it lower. Like, did it sound like it's lower? I played. Flat on the line below the stand. Oh, do you mean can I do that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. It's just out of the range for a bass. That's all. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you gotta yeah. know that too. Yeah. No one, no one can sing that low. Yeah. Bar baritone, maybe. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's really a the, too, yeah. the limits, yeah. around the limits of depth. Yeah. Right. Where's that? What do you play with that? Two ledger lines below. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, when you have a true bass, they can usually sing down to a low C, two ledger lines below. Uh, but, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, yeah, that's right. Is there any rule against the, for example, the G to the... To the E from the six to the four, G to the E, because the, it six. seems like a jump. I, I don't know if it's mm -hmm. just something that I personally. Yep. Have, I don't know if it's like in my sure. head that you're not supposed to have that big of a jump. Right. Uh, in general, that's a good, good question. Uh, in general, when we're doing four part voice leading, uh, the bass can yeah. do whatever gotcha, uh, gotcha, gotcha. that person wants. Okay. Uh, so it's and, more the higher. The higher three parts uh, should be kept. You can think of it as, uh, have you ever seen an organ? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, like an organ with manuals and a pedal. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yes. So the pedal, the, the beat, okay, the, the person playing it, it's like, this is a whole independent part. Mm -hmm. Whereas the manuals, 
they're, they're, they're different. So you're really talking about two distinct things. Right. Uh, and the tradition in general is that the, the pedal, the, the bottom notes, uh, they can they can do. Okay, you can jump on. I just wanted to make sure because that, that's part of the reason why I didn't mm -hmm. make a move because I was wondering if I was supposed to have that big of a jump. Right. right. No, that makes so, sense. Okay. Professor Vanessa, I came out first time. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the yeah. so firm will say melody next yeah. to the time. So can we put melody okay. or whatever it wants to? Sure. Oh. I, look, uh, the, you, if any part can really do whatever he or she wants. Uh, but when we talk about the most conservative way oh. of voice leading, and this, I'm not writing a melody. Okay? I'm, I'm realizing these chord progressions in a way that is the closest, most singable way of, of doing it. Okay? And that's why the soprano's part sounds kind of boring. You have so, so, la, la. I mean, you know, again, egos aside, right? Like that's, that's not very interesting for that. Uh, so this is just the, the vanilla, the most sort of uh, uh, conventional way of, of doing it. Okay. Yeah, Claudia? No, no, when you're playing that or you, yep. you have do you have more than an octave then? Uh, um, from here? On the G, right. Right, right, right. I do. Uh, I have, in fact, two octaves. Yeah. And is there an octave rule that we talk about? No, but no. it's just how you, in my, my hand doesn't read. Ah, so then you can you can uh, play the top three notes in one hand. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah, I but see. you're still reading it. I mean, you're still writing it two voices per. Okay. okay. Uh, next, cadential six four. We're doubling the F. Okay, and we know that the bass is going to be what? What note? This. F. F. Excellent. Okay. Um, okay, so I did one of them. Are there any common tones? B flat. B flat. Okay. So, uh, all right, cool. Uh, Ruth Ann, in this case, what would you do with the soprano alto? Um, so, F flat for the soprano, F flat? I mean, F, yeah. sorry. F, was it soprano you said? Okay. You just have one more note left. D for the alto. Okay. So here, here is this one. Oh, sorry. And then, right? You can hear that. That's that dominant sound. Right. Again, here. Next, uh, the five seven. This is the only seven chords, so we have all seven, um, all of the notes here: F, A, C, E flat. Okay, and we know what's going to be in the bass. What's going to be in the bass? F. F. Right. So you're holding that note. Right. Uh, and that's in fact the common tone. Um, and we're going to do one of them uh, next. What uh, are there any other common tones? No. no. Okay. Great. So the next thing we would do is to move each voice. Um, uh, now remember, from the start of the class, it talks about the sixth four chord, right? The sixth of the chord moves to which note? The fifth. The fifth. Okay. So the sixth here is which letter name? C. The sixth from the bass. Wait, this is the sixth four here. Okay. The bass is F, so what's yeah. the six above the, the bass? D. D. Okay. So this is the this is the six. Okay. I'm just filling in for for uh, dramatic emphasis. Okay. Um, which resolves to a C. Okay. And then the fourth above the bass, which is what note here? B flat, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Asia. <laughs> Sticking your neck out here. All right. And it resolves to uh, the third above the bass. Okay. So then you have this sound here. Now, 
The only other note that's left is this, All right, which is an E flat. Okay. Again, I'm just using quarter notes just to highlight. This. I'm just using it as a like, color. I'm highlighting the fact that these two notes, the sixth above and the fourth above, needs to resolve down. Okay. Right. Now, finally, um, we're, we're resolving to the ca cadence. This is the cadence. Right. It's 5, 7 to 1. Uh, it's a perfect, or well, it's, it's an authentic cadence, which is what 5, five to 1 means. Um, and we'll talk about different cadences next week. Uh, but just know that this is an authentic cadence. Okay, perfect, right? Right here also? No. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> All right. So, authentic. Okay. So, authentic cadence 5, 1. Um, there are a few types of authentic cadences, but just for right now, know that this is authentic. Uh, next, we know that the base of the of the last chord is going to be one, which is B flat. Okay. And now uh, a few things. Okay. Look at rule number five and rule number six. The seventh of the key, uh, also called the leading tone, resolves up. What's the leading tone of B flat major? Okay. Okay. So the leading tone uh, is this guy, LT. Okay. That's what that says. LT resolves up. So if that's true, then that has to go to a B flat. Next, the last rule here says the seventh of the chord resolves down. Okay. So the seventh of this chord is which letter name? This is the which chord? Of oh, this chord, 5-7 chord. The second to last chord. E, e flat. Thank you. Nope. Right. So then this is the 7th. And so yes, it resolves to a D. Okay. okay. Uh, and then we have two B flats, a D. In this instance, okay, uh, this is a special case, and it's it's okay if you you didn't didn't get this. Um, I would uh, leave out the F and triple the root, right? Uh, but that's don't worry about it if you don't get it. If you do get it, it's that's that's good, okay? Uh, I'll tell you a little bit why uh, right after I play this, okay? So here's the whole progression. Uh, a few things to note, all the fives, uh, they have a similar sound, they're dominant in function. Right? We, we'll talk about function in a little bit, okay? but uh, and all the ones also sound similar, they're tonic in function, they sound very like they're in, in, in itself. Okay? Uh, so here again, take a look at the soprano line. Um, what are the solfege syllables that you would use to sing the top line? Top line? Yeah. What's the what's the? Yep. Yeah. First, you have sol. All right, so let's sing it. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here's soul. Can you sing soul? So it's going to be soul, soul. Here we go. Ready? And. Wow, wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it twice as slow. Twice. Okay. okay. So so this is the this is the pulse. Okay. Right. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. La. What about the alto line? Uh. <laughs> 
Let's sing the alto line together. Here we go. Ready? And. Good. Tenor. Sing a little bit of tenor. Start with do. Do, re, do, 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 ti, do. Sing do, please. Here we go. Ready? And. Okay. And finally, let's try the bass. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. And what are the syllables here? Let's, let's sing it with the harmony. Ready, go. So, last thing about this is um, the reason why I opted to triple the root at the end, uh, it's mostly because of... Um, Yes, we need to follow the rules of doubling, yes. Uh, but more, even more important is that uh, the seventh of the chord and the leading tone are very potent. They're very important things, right? And so the, the need for them to resolve to the proper note uh, really trumps any other, uh, any other consideration uh, in this case. Uh, so in order to preserve this idea of uh, this, or rather, so this tritone, Moving to um, to a major third, so the leading tone going up, the seventh going down. Okay. The only way to really uh, re preserve this, right, is by um, leaving out um, leaving out the, uh, the 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 fifth. I made a mistake here. I, I didn't I didn't mean to double the third. I meant to do this. Just to triple the root, right? Um, that is to say, uh, because the fifth, the fifth of chord is not as not as important. Okay, if you have the root and third, you can imply uh, the rest. Uh, if you have a major triad, if you just hear the first two notes, okay, uh, that's often enough. Okay? So having this is not entirely necessary. The same thing as with the minor chord. Just hearing this, okay? It's it's already it's already uh, useful. Okay. Any questions about about this? Okay. Okay. Let's try just two more chords here, <coughs> uh, and we'll do it together. And we'll. I'll, um, oh, actually, no. Um, what I wanted to do was. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. So I know you're not supposed to do it. I just want to know that's that's what it is. Or? So the parallel fifths has to do with having uh, two. So for example, if um, if for example I have this. Oh, I don't know. Let's Uh, we're moving from four to five in B flat, right? And a four chord in B flat is E flat, and the five chord in B flat is F, okay? Uh, and uh, the four chord has E flat, G, and B flat, and I'll double the E flats because that's the root. The five chord in B flat is F, A, and C, I'll double the F, 
Right? Uh, and I'll just write it out. Let's see this here. Okay. So I'm doubling the E flat here in both both voices. The E flat is in the bass and also in the alto. Okay. Uh, and now I'm trying to uh, move to the next chord. So I'm gonna move everything. There's no common tones because these are uh, one one step apart. These two chords. So I'm gonna just move it to the closest next uh, next next tone. Uh, so I have A F. Um, what this sounds like is this. And the parallel fits here happen in the between the tenor and the bass. Okay. Why that is not desirable, again, in you know, in, in what we're doing, um, is because this confuses the ear. Uh, because the fifth is such a consonant interval that it sounds like uh, it's just one voice. Okay. Um, of course, you can hear that there are two notes. Yes, I you know. But uh, the idea here is that in context, okay, it sounds less independent than something like where I have the top three voices move down. So that versus versus that's all. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I was confused okay. myself. Um. The most important thing here, and we're not going to spend uh, like ages, you know, talking about SATD, uh, but the most important thing here is uh, for me uh, uh, and for this class is for you to prioritize this. You need to use the right notes. Okay. Uh, you need to use, for, for example, if, if if you are trying to write a chord progression uh, with five and five six and all of that, uh, please use the correct uh, correct notes. Okay. Next, uh, you also need to know what the general range of the voices are right? uh, and, and again in this case just try to stay in in the middle of the staff except uh, bass. what's that except bass except the, the bass the bass can, can move around yeah. yeah next i also uh would like you to be able to uh move the voices as close as possible to the next voice right this is a good skill again when you when you're harmonizing something when you're writing your own stuff when you're wanting that sound that's really close okay you're practicing ways different ways to 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 move from one chord to the next okay um all the other considerations uh, uh the finally i guess the the the, the least important of, of this at the moment uh is the doubling okay it's good to know what notes to double uh, especially at the condensial point uh when you're when you're writing a chart um and you know that you're on a pedal at the end right then you you know oh okay the underlying principle here is that i'm trying to double that five because it sounds like a five it's not a one four okay? it's not a one six four uh and that's that's part of the reason why we're doing it uh whether or not you can do you can um you know remember the parallel fits and whatever whatever um it's not as important for what we're doing because uh, in a week or so, we're going to move on to to thinking about um, to thinking about using non chord tones. Okay, so this is a preparation for for talking about all the notes that don't belong in the chord that you still hear. Okay, so these things include passing tones, neighbor tones, uh, appoggiatures, escape tones, retardations, suspensions. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Appoggiatura. It's Italian, I think. Okay. Uh, this sounds like a Pokemon. Go on, Pajitore. Yes, Kemba. You're playing too much Pokemon. Yes. Uh, I, I, I wish I had more time, but in the fa last five minutes, um, pull up your, your blackboard, okay? And I'll just briefly go over the syllabus. Oh, you can print it too. Okay.